Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, I want to show you something that I've discovered recently, which is the uh, technique whereby you can actually crossfit between two images. So over here, if you can see on my screen, I have the iPhone Pro, uh, iPhone 11 Pro Max, and uh, I have an image view over here and uh, the photo of this a uh, really cool fashion star guy over here. <laughs> and uh, notice that as I scroll through the uh, screen, I can actually uh, transit to another image all right and when I transit there is actually this change in opacity as well so you see when I uh, scroll and if I scroll it backwards you know you can see that there's a fade between the two images over here all right so in this video I want to uh, show you how you can perform that and also this uh, technique is part of a series of, uh, of a course that I'm building so I will uh, share with you guys at the end of the uh, the lesson all right, guys, so if you're interested to build something like that, I think one of its application is uh, when you're building some kind of onboarding screen and, you know, you want to uh, show different uh, slides. Uh, and then this is a good way where, you know, the user can just transit from uh, one item to the other. All right, guys, without further ado, let's open up our very trusty Xcode and uh, let's create a brand new uh, Xcode project. All right, guys, so it looks like this. And uh, let me just expand this and let's select the single view application. So I'm gonna call this uh, cross dissolve, dissolve demo iOS. Okay, you can call it whatever you want. Uh, language, we're gonna use Swift. User interface, we're gonna use Storyboard. All right, so click on next and I'm gonna save it on my desktop. Okay, first thing we wanna do, let's come to the storyboard. And uh, all right guys, so before I proceed further, I just wanna explain how I achieved this, okay? So obviously there's gonna be uh, an image view, okay? There's, there's actually two image views over here. And uh, so as I, as I transit, you know, basically I change the opacity or rather the alpha values of the image view itself. And the next question you're wondering is that, hey, how do you detect this uh, scroll over here, all right? I think there are several ways to do it. Um, but I, for this example, I use the collection view, all right? So let's, uh, let me just show you how I get this first, okay? So first thing I wanna do, let's create a UI view, okay? So this is gonna be some kind of container view and uh, let me just put it over here and let's fill up the entire screen. Oops, I don't need this, okay? So uh, let's, oops, let's have this um, pinned to the edges over here and I'm gonna set some color over here, maybe a uh, light gray color. Okay, next uh, I'm gonna add two image views. So plus again, image view. Okay, so saying, uh, I want this to be within this, uh, this UI view that I've just created. So, okay, so I'm just gonna pin this on the UI view and I think, uh, let me just give this a name, okay? So it's easy to know. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna call this image view uh, container, container, all right? I think that's a good name. So I wanna duplicate uh, this image view. I'm gonna hold on to the alternate button on my keyboard, click and drag, and this creates another image view over here. And I'm gonna do the same thing by adding the constraints on every side. Okay, so I have two image views within the image view container and let's come to the uh, view controller file. I'm gonna hold on to the alternate button and click on this, which opens this panel on my right. So let's just connect the IB outlets first. Okay, so click on this, bring this in. I, let's call this image view one. Okay, and uh, let's bring this in and let's call this image view two. Okay, very easy to understand. And uh, all right, I'm gonna drag in some assets over here. So uh, as you can see over here, I have two images over here and I already have them on my desktop already. So I'm just gonna drag them in. Okay, I am fashion one, sorry, I am fashion one and I am fashion two, all right? So they are the images that I've used for the example. Okay, so let's come back to the main storyboard and for the uh, image view one, I'm going to set the image over here. So I am fashion one and uh, let me just, um, Aspect view to view it full screen. I'm going to do the same for image of view two as well. And I notice when I do this, this will cover the image view one because image uh, view two is at the uh, is at the top. Okay, so yep, it's gonna look like that. Let me just run the simulator so just to build this so that we don't waste time later. Okay, yeah, okay, nothing is moving and this is the right behavior. But uh, when we first load the app, we don't want image view 2 to show because we want the first image to show, all right? So let's come back uh, to the file itself. Okay, and uh, let's just create a function here uh, called setup views. Okay, 
and let's create a private function setup view so we do image view one dot alpha uh, this will be one and image uh, view two dot alpha should be zero all right so we're gonna show the first one all right let me just run this okay so this is what we want all right so now we want to add the collection view so let's do it this way um collection view okay not the cell we want the collection view so we want to cover the entire thing as well okay so let's just cover the entire thing over here okay and uh let's see uh okay so let's do it this way let's uh also add the constraints on every side over here okay so right now i'm gonna set a background color so let's maybe use uh i don't know what's a good color maybe t t color blue why do we call it t when it's blue <laughs> okay let's let me run this and uh, i should see that the collection view should be covering the entire view okay this is what i want and uh, i have a prototype cell over here so let's also create a color over here uh, maybe let's use yellow okay so i think if i run it right now the yellow shouldn't be showing because i have to create the delegates and the data source and all that first all right so let's do that now let's click on the collection view right click on it and we have the data source and delegate and we can just uh, hook it up to the view controller like that okay so let's come back to the view controller itself and uh, because we have already hooked that up let's create an extension a uh, view controller and we have to conform to ui collection view uh, data source ui collection view delegate as well as ui collection view delegate flow layout all right so guys you might be wondering what the uh, flow layout is so let's uh go on to the command and click on this and let's jump to definition and you realize that this is a protocol and uh, it gives us some functions over here all right they are optional functions uh, and it has to do mostly with size uh, sizing related stuff over here right so we want to conform to this so that we can set the uh, frame of the uh, collection view cell all right guys so i'm actually waiting for x uh, xcode to complain but it's not complaining so i'm going to do command b to build this and i'm pretty sure you'll complain all right so it prompts us to add the protocol stops here on the fix and over here number of items in section we want to return to all right because we have two uh, images over here but uh, ideally it should be dynamic okay we shouldn't be uh, inputting like a fixed value over here uh, over here we need to return a collection view cell so let's do let cell equals to collection view cell collection view dot dq reusable let's use uh, i think this one okay for the cell identifier i'm going to call it cell id and then uh, let's pass in the index path all right, let's copy this cell ID as well and remember to just paste that in here. Otherwise, I think the app is gonna crash <laughs> when we run it. All right, so let's come back here and let's do return cell and let's run this uh, simulator right now. I believe I should see two yellow cells. All right, two small puny little cells. And uh, what I wanna do is that I wanna maybe change the size of this cell. So let's do cell for item add and we're gonna return collection view dot frame dot size i think this should be good all right so let me just uh, command r again to build this and the whole yellow should fill up the entire thing all right i think there's a little bit of a gap over here but i think we'll fix that uh, in a while okay so what's next is uh, we need to create a another function here let's call it setup collection view okay so private func set up collection view over here and for this collection view we want to do a couple of things over here we, we i think we want to uh, create some kind of uh what, what do we need we need something like a layout so that we can set uh, certain uh, properties over here all right so let's do it this way so uh, let layout equals to uh, ui collection view flow layout okay and then we can do a collection view dot um oh we don't have the the reference yet okay so let's let's just put it in ib outlet week var collection view of type ui collection view big bang over here come over to the main storyboard right click over here and we find the reference for the collection view and let's just hook this guy up over here okay guys one more thing um I don't really want this collection view to be in the uh, same view hierarchy of the image view container. So I'm just going to bring it, bring it out over here so that it's uh, in the same hierarchy over here. All right, and uh, I'm not sure if the layout constraints are affected. Yes, they are. So let's uh, set them in one more time. Okay, so let's come back over here and uh, 
collection view dot uh, layout. All right. So so this is this 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 kind of buffers me as well. Why why don't the the iOS team just do like something like dot layout equals to layout? But instead they want to do the property is called collection view layout. Why guys? <laughs> okay. So. <laughs> All right, and uh, what else do we want to do? We want to change the um, the scroll of the scroll um, direction of the layout. So we do it this way: layout dot scroll direction equals to horizontal. Okay, let's run this, and let's see what do we have. All right, so as you, as you, oh, okay, so we can scroll uh, horizontally this time, and we want the uh, uh, paging effect. So is paging? Yeah, let's have it to be true. Okay, let's run this. All right, so, yep, so we have the effect. And uh, I don't really want this space in between over here. And I think the way to fix this is to have this thing called minimum something. I think it's this one, return zero. Okay, let's see if this fixes it. Yeah, okay, <laughs> you can't really see now. Okay, so, all right, so we have that already. So what is next? So we have the collection view and we want the um, the collection view to actually give us the coordinates when we uh, scroll, all right? So let's come over here and uh, I think let's implement something called uh, scroll view, did scroll, okay, I think there are several uh, functions you can call like scroll view the end decelerating and all that stuff but i realized that this uh, works the best for me okay so let's do uh, let x equals to scroll view so we have access to the scroll view over here uh, dot content off content offset oops offset dot x so let's just print out what x is first all right so let me just print this here all right guys so you notice that as i scroll it should uh, let me just bring this guy up a little bit, okay? Okay, so as I scroll, you notice that when I release, when I release, this is at 414. All right, so 414 is actually the size of the um, of the uh, collection view uh, frame itself, all right? So basically what we want to do is that from 0 to 414, we want to know like what is the percentage, all right, from 0 to 1, so that we can set the alpha value. All right, guys, so this is uh, how I actually uh, find out. Okay, but before that, we want to get the index itself. So let's create a function called uh, get current index. Okay, whether it's one or two, or oh, sorry, whether it's zero or one, because we have two items over here. So the current index will be, uh, let's return um, collection view dot content offset dot x divided by collection view dot frame dot width. Okay, so this is the way I get the current index itself, and this will return me an int. Okay, so this will either be a, uh, a 0 or a 1 over here. Okay, so let me just show it to you what I mean by that. Um, print get, oops, get current index. Okay, let's run this guy, and let's see what this does. Okay, so... It's gonna be zero, but when I release, when this ends, it's gonna show me a one. All right. Yeah, I know this is kind of annoying. <laughs> okay, when I when I scroll all the way to the end, it tells me a zero. When I scroll, it tells me a one. When uh, notice that it returns a one when the scroll has ended. All right. So you, you so when it's ended, then it shows me a one. All right, guys. Uh, Okay, then, then what we need is that, let's, so let's compute how are we gonna get the alpha values over here. So let's do a let index equals to get current index. And let's do let the fade in, uh, fade in alpha equals to, all right guys, uh, I'm just gonna type in the formula over here, all right? I, I, I don't really wanna explain it because uh, <laughs> I think it's really hard to explain it, but I think if you look through the formula, you'll kind of understand how I actually derive the alpha values. Okay, so we want to get the collection view width as well. So let's just create a, a, a value here, collection uh, view width, and this will be of type CG float. And let's just return a collection view dot frame dot width. Okay, so the fade in value is um, x minus collection view width. Uh, times cg float index 
um, divide by collection. Uh, wait, let me see. Divide by collection view width. All right, so I think this is how it's done. Uh, let me see. Mm. Oh, it's here. I need to put in another bracket here. All right. So let me just print this fit. Okay, maybe let's do this fit in alpha. Okay, uh, that will be. Let's paste this in here, and let's see what this uh, returns to us. Okay, so it should be from zero to one. Oops, not zero to one apparently. <laughs> oh, four one three. Why is that so? Divide by. Hey, let me see if I'm typing this incorrectly. Uh, let me just paste this in. Fit in alpha. Uh, okay, let me just run it one more time. Yeah, okay. Don't know why it wasn't working earlier. All right, so now as you can see, it's from zero all the way to kind of like close to one. Okay, so uh, obviously uh, the fade out alpha should be the inverse of that. Fade out alpha will be one minus fade in alpha. All right, so basically we'll be using these two alpha values to kind of, you know, change the, uh, the alpha values of the image uh, views. So over here, I'm going to do... Um, image view one dot alpha equals to fade out alpha and image view two dot alpha equals to fade in alpha. All right, guys, this uh, formula only works for two image views. If you want to have more than one, then it will be uh, slightly different, okay? So let me just run this to see if this works. Oh, okay, guys, you can't see it, obviously, because there is a collection view cell. So what I need to do is I can just come over here and do cell dot background color equals to UI color dot clear. Okay, I can do it here or via the storyboard. Okay, but I'll just do it over here. And collection view dot uh, background color. Let's do the same. Oops, let's do the background color equals to i think you can just do dot clear like that i think it's fine let's run this yeah i think that could just be it all right guys is it working yeah i think it's working so let me just uh, scroll this one more time oh so okay so it looks like when i scroll to the end it bounces back to the last one why is that so okay i think i forgot to add this thing over here let's come over here to this and uh let's just have this gut statement over here okay let's see uh two minus one it's less than uh two minus one i think this is this is it yeah all right so this gut statement kind of protects us from going to uh i don't know it does some kind of other behavior as well all right Okay, sorry guys, I'm just copying this from the full code that I have over here. So guys, this is uh, the way how you can uh, scroll between the two uh, images and, and have that cross dissolve effect, all right? Hey guys, if you're interested to learn more, I have a course that I've just released on Udemy and it teaches you to build some onboarding apps and I'm gonna show you how it looks like. So over here, we have the fashion app. So it kind of uses the same technique that we have over here whereby you can scroll and it scrolls to the different images over here. All right, so of course, when you hit the next button, it uh, transits uh, uh, programmatically. When you click on the explore button, it brings you to the main part of the app. All right, so we are going to be building three projects in this course over here. And uh, we also have a uh, onboarding screen where we have a background layout that's running uh, in the background. So that's pretty cool as well. And when you click on the get started button, it uh, transits you to the main app. So this is the second project that we built in the course. And in the third project that we built, let me see where it is. I think uh, it's, um, is this the one? I think, let's see. Oh yeah, this is the one. <laughs> so this is a travel app. So over here, you see that there is a label and there are some uh, page controls over here. And this uh, works via a, uh, a tap gesture. So when I tap on this, you realize that there's a transition over here. So uh, if I'm to tap to the last item over here and uh, I will actually go to the main app. All right, guys. So if you like what you see here, uh, uh, please feel free to check out the uh, course and descriptions are in the links below. See you guys.